after you've had repeated exchanges with a strongly narcissistic individual, it just becomes glaringly obvious to you that it doesn't take much at all to throw that person off their game. Narcissists carry an ongoing undertow of irritability and agitation and annoyance, and it doesn't take much at all for them to be triggered. And whenever there is a strain and difficulty, they keep pressing you to do whatever you have to do to make them feel good. But ultimately, all of this agitation and emotional dysregulation speaks of one very large problem that they have, and that is they don't know how to cope. Now, they absolutely will not say that out loud. Uh, when you show yourself to be too other or too different, they, they won't don't say, know how I don't to know cope. what to do with that. Instead, what they do is they just make you the, uh, like the problematic you person, the number one and they try to fit yet? you into whatever kind of scheme uh, that they have in mind. The proof right but in there, fact, the it's going to be so essential for you to realize this is not about you. They're responsibility for, responsible for who they are, not you. And I want us well, to zero in on right four now. very if common so, uh, elements that are on the inside of uh, narcissists that Which explain why they it's have the such poor coping skills. Now, the first thing I want to zero in on is when a person is in that narcissistic pattern, they have uh, almost no expansive thinking. Now, when we say expansive thinking, uh, in, uh, the opposite of that is they, they live with a very, very fixed and tight agenda. Here's the way things have to be. They're, they're, they have that real strong need to be the dominant person. They, they will quickly invalidate you. And so they make little to no room for nuance rather than thinking, you know, there are, there are a lot of different things we need to consider here. Let, let's talk. Uh, instead, they make lots of uh, comments of criticism. And the way it plays out, it, uh, and see if this sounds very familiar to you, is when you're working on a task with them, for example, they're going to bring a let's do it my way kind of mentality, no expansive thinking. Or when you have a discussion about opinions or perspective, again, instead of being expansive, it's like, no, I already have my mind made up. Just do what I tell you to do. Or instead of meeting challenges with a, a brainstorming session, uh, it's like, well, we're going to meet the challenges the way I say it needs to be. And so they have an astonishing low ability to put their thoughts out there and say they want to have your thoughts and let's see if we can blend and harmonize. It, it just simply doesn't happen. Now, a second reason that narcissists have very difficult, uh, great difficulty in their coping skills is they bring a very low level of self-awareness to the equation. And when I say self-awareness, you know, we, we each need to have a, a sense of honesty about who we are, but let's keep in mind that one of the defining features of narcissism is that they have to protect their own false self. They, they build an image of who they want people to think that they are, and as a result, if you, if you see something that's not consistent with that, then that, that really blows them away, and instead of saying, well, you know, I, I have a lot of things that I need to grow and learn about, they can't and they won't do it. They don't take responsibility for who they are. They, they're not reliable when it comes to relational kind of issues because that lack, lack of self-awareness keeps their focus external, which is you, as opposed to internal. So what this means is, in the midst of differences, you're the one who's labeled as miserable. Or they uh, repeatedly show you how they're stuck in a rut in the way that they engage with you. They, they give you the same dysfunctional or uh, 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 unhelpful responses repeatedly and predictably. And they actually exhibit an inflated, illogical ego. It's like, why this do you have such a so tired huge of notion shit. of who you are? They have to be the one that's in the know, even when they don't really know. So their lack of self-awareness uh, is part of their inability to cope. Now, another uh, key in... Another. Uh, now, Nikki, for the final part of tonight's... Uh, narcissist from being able to, uh, to, to cope well is they, they have next to no conception of teamwork. One of the primary ingredients that uh, makes relationships go well is to have the sense that says, I feel what I feel, but you feel what you feel. 
I have my uh, interpretations, but you have yours. By the way, we have a word for that. That's uh, it's empathy, where we learn how to tune in with each other uh, with an understanding of that other person's perspective in mind. Instead of that, narcissists, with their uh, poor coping skills, they start with the assumption that says, it's your job to conform to me. And so your otherness uh, throws them off. They have a stubborn refusal to even consider who you are and what you feel and what your backstory is. Uh, they will show uh, a passive aggressive kind of style whenever you uh, uh, don't uh, give them what they want. They, they have an astonishingly low uh, sense of curiosity. They don't care what you bring to the equation. Uh, blending, teamwork, harmonizing, all of that that's part of empathy, it's just not in the equation for them. They do not bring that, that uh, characteristic to the table with you. And then a fourth primary reason that narcissists have such difficulty to cope, and, and this is a really big one, and that is they have no appreciation for your desire to choose. In other words, freedom, at least your freedom, scares them. Now, it, it would be really interesting when I was in my counseling practice and I, I'd have these real high control people in my well, uh, counseling office. Sentence, and I was in, have no appreciation for your desire to choose. No appreciation in other words, for freedom, your desire your freedom to choose. Scares them. What the fuck is this sentence? It's literally just pooping random words. What? Now, it would be really interesting when I was in my counseling practice and I'd have these real high control people in my uh, counseling office, I would actually would throw out that word freedom. I might say something like that other person has choose. the freedom to think and feel as like, they do. What? Can you acknowledge that? And you would what think that I was using question. one of the craziest words ever, freedom. No, I don't want to give them freedom. What, what are you doing talking to me about their freedom? I mean, that's going to lead to chaos, and that's how they think. When in fact, freedom is simply defined as the privilege to choose. And people are at their best when they have options in front of them. It doesn't mean you don't have consequences or stipulations or boundaries. But uh, when, when it comes to uh, engaging well with others, you want to start with the assumption, I like to have my privilege to choose. I know you do. So uh, their inability to uh, appreciate your need for freedom keeps them in this overbearing and harsh and condescending kind of way. And as a result, they tend to uh, to lean towards authoritarianism uh, because uh, it's like, well, if I just do all the thinking, that's going to solve that problem. And so the net result is uh, in their inability to cope because of these four primary ingredients, they will bring, especially to conflict, a mindset that says, I'm going to show you who's boss or I have to neutralize you, or uh, I'm going to make life miserable for you if you don't do what I say. And you're over there thinking, can't you just appreciate me for what I am? Which is a legitimate kind of question, by the way. But as we consider who they are and what they bring to the equation, I think you're going to have to remind yourself there's a, a very, especially with that low self-awareness factor in there, there's a very low probability that you're going to say the golden words that are going to cause them to turn around. That being the case, I'm hoping that you can decide, well, I do know how to cope, and I do know how to manage differences, and it all starts with my interior, what I believe about who I am and what I know about myself, and I want to run through some thoughts that I hope that you can lock down on that would uh, become a part of your good coping skills and it would be a great contrast to where that narcissist is coming from. For example, as you're trying to figure out what your coping skills are going to consist of, I hope that you can think to yourself, if I have to give up who I am to appease that other person, we both lose. My uniqueness is a good thing. The narcissist may not think so, but I do. I think that my uniqueness is something that is good and necessary. I make no... Well, you're certainly unique, all right? But I am out of here now. No further links. We are Gucci.